All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the advantages and why it makes sense to go with cheaper LPVOs some of the time. Now, I kind of mentioned and alluded to when I did my full video on modernizing my FNFAL and why I chose this specific optic. Now, this is a SIG Tango MSR and to be honest, there are a myriad of actually pretty shockingly or at least surprisingly good or solid LPVOs on the market in 2024. Whether you go with more of the kind of Amazon brands or whether you choose to go with something a little bit more reputable or from a more or larger brand such as SIG in this case or other brands such as Vortex and uh, those types of companies, Primary Arms being another one, um, that are a little bit more, like I said, brand recognized or recognizable brands that make budget LPVOs. Now, what are some of the traditional reasons to go for an LPVO that's cheaper? So the first one is, of course, if you're starting out and you don't have tons of expendable cash, do just go and blow on an optic. Things like the Atacar from Night Force can be $1,800, which is sometimes more expensive than the rifle you're buying or just as expensive as the rifle you're purchasing. Now, other reasons traditionally why you'd go with a cheaper LPVO is say you have multiple rifles, multiple sappers that you're trying to set up or even bolt guns that you're trying to set up and you need something affordable to put on every one of them. So you have multiple budget rifles or sometimes not even super budget rifles that you're trying to outfit with optics. And and I will say in this regard, something beats nothing. It's more valuable to have an optic on your rifle than not, in my opinion, just across the board, especially when it comes to something that has magnification. Now, when it comes to red dots, that's a little bit less true. Um, but when it comes to something like if your intentions are to throw a magnified optic on it, having magnification is better than not having magnification if that fits the bill. So. Those are some of the traditional reasons as to why you would want to go with something that is more budget. Now, when I'm making this video, I do really want to specify that there are many good valiant budget options out there that are pretty darn bomb proof. I'm not telling you that you should just go and buy the cheapest possible LPVO that you can for this purpose of this video. I really mean when I'm talking about budget LP LPVOs, ones that are bomb proof, AKA ones that don't break upon abuse, um, at least moderate amounts of abuse, and also ones that don't have huge or noticeable point of aim or point of impact shifts, once again, on abuse. And I really do wanna make that a point because I think that um, I don't intentionally go out to abuse my optics, but I do a lot of traveling around Alaska to shoot my guns. And so that I can travel for five hours across very bumpy roads, hauling rifles to go to different shooting courses, to different shooting ranges, to shoot with friends in other uh, cities and stuff. And when I do that, once again, driving multiple hours across shaky environments, and so these kind of abuse tests that you see on YouTube may seem kind of far-fetched, but they do have some legitimacy because when I throw this in a rifle bag, throw it in the back of the truck and drive five hours across bumpy roads, this thing is getting shaken. This thing's getting shaken and shook like so for hours on end, right? And so once again, the abuse tests might seem kind of outlandish and some of them are a little bit more outlandish, but um, having a optic that won't have a point of impact shift on you um, is very important. Now I do think similar to things like dots and lasers, um, especially if you are about to do something really important such as hunting, you should always re-verify your point of impact. Point of impact can shift and they can also shift even if the gun doesn't really go through anything because our eyes naturally shift and change and evolve over time and when I mean evolve usually it changes for the worse but your point of impact is can vary from shooter to shooter and also from year to year if your eyes start to 
go south. Um, not to say that it'll largely shift, but it can lead to points of impact shift, especially at greater ranges. So um, it's not always the site's fault. Um, sometimes there are some factors such as ammunition, such as the actual shooter, their eyes. Of course, if you're shooting on a singular day, um, you know, your point of impact is probably not going to shift that much, but definitely always double check point of impact because I feel like sometimes scopes get a bad rap for that when it actually has more to do with the, like I said, like I said, with the ammunition or the shooter themselves. Now, going back to the main core of why I think yet another reason for choosing cheap LPVOs. Now, once again, if you have something like a Christensen Arms MPR Modern Precision Rifle, or if you're going for a bolt gun, you know, a super precise bolt gun, um, something like maybe a Q Fix uh, would be another good choice or mention here. But if you're going with something like that, you do really want to take the time and invest in a quality optic because with rifles that are truly sub MOA or right around hovering around that one MOA um, it really is worth getting a good optic but I think a lot of people get very dug down or maybe drugged down into the minutia of having the best tactical operator class gear um, and that's where like I said on this particular rifle I actually chose a cheaper optic because of the reality that firearms like this FNF FAL, while really effective and definitely minute of man, is definitely not a precision rifle. This is by no means a precision semi-automatic rifle. Now, that, like, once again, doesn't mean that this is an inaccurate gun. It certainly will deliver hits minute of man, but I think with a gun like this, going with a more budget, more affordable, and more realistic LPVO makes a lot of sense because this gun is not going to be delivering you thousand yard shots. This gun isn't going to be delivering you you know supreme sub moa accuracy even at 100 meters this gun is about a <clears throat> two moa rifle at best probably nearing four moa and that is just the reality of fal so they're not like i said the most precision rifle out there but they never were really designed to be these were designed from the ground up to be fighting rifles and similar to why the ak akm platforms were and still really aren't sub moa rifles um, these are designed to be fighting rifles. AKs are designed to be fighting rifles. Now, certainly it is worth noting that ARs are designed to be fighting rifles as well, and they certainly have a lot better ability to become precision rifles, but even most ARs realistically and very truthfully speaking are not sub MOA and most of them aren't even one MOA rifles. I'm um, just being completely honest. Now granted, like I said, most ARs will probably outshoot things like FNFALs um, and other, you know, such semi-automatic platforms, but even an AR is not a sub MOA or almost all uh, ARs are not sub MOA rifles and they're just not really built to be that way. So being completely honest and fully transparent here, um, you know, setting your sights realistically on what the rifle that you have is and what its actual realistic capabilities are. Once again, that's something I've ran into with a lot of these budget um, LPVO and Prism Optic reviews. A lot of people give these optics a lot of grief when they're actually using guns that are not inherently particularly accurate themselves. And so people are like, oh, you know, I didn't get sub MOA group or my shots were off over here. And, you know, people are blaming the optic for the performance when it's actually the rifle itself. So once again, um, kind of to clarify the point and not to you know spend too much time talking about it. I think a lot of people, you know, sit there and they're like, you know, they sit there and they're like, oh, the, the optic has to be the best of the best. But if your rifle can't hit, you know, the sub MOA or even one MOA territories, I personally wouldn't really go for something that's a super expensive optic. Now, once again, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go for just any old thing. I would try to go for, you know, reputable brands, things like Leopold and uh, even, you know, like I said, SIG makes a solid optic, Primary Arms makes solid optic, um, Monstrum, which is another one that's 
um, mentioned a lot or very frequently in these types of budget LPVO territories or videos. Seems to make solid optics as well. But um, yeah, so that's kind of my end conclusion is that, you know, try to find an optic that really matches the grade of your rifle. And once again, being very realistic, Minute of Man is not by any stretch of the imagination a bad point to you know like have a rifle at you know like having a four or two or three moa rifle is not by any means a terrible thing and once again depending on what your application your build for that rifle is completely acceptable and that's where like something like this gun really a budget lpvo suits it very well because this is a 12 and a half inch barreled um fnfal once again fnfals are not supremely accurate rifles to begin with and a 12 and a half inch barreled fnfal is not going to be a long range performance beast or machine this is not going to be the type of gun that you're going to be reaching out and hitting you know thousand yard dongs at right this is not going to be that type of rifle never will be and i didn't buy it with that um, kind of idea in mind and personally with a lot of realistic tactical shooting and such having a rifle that can do that is great as a dedicated platform but i would rather prioritize having a firearm that does better close quarters which is you know like inside of 200 meters than a rifle that does better out to you know thousand meters and so once again for a generalist platform i think that this is a very solid choice um, but i wouldn't try to you know like force a a super long range rifle into close range or close quarters typed environments. So once again, understanding what your rifle is built for and what you intend to use it for and getting a total system that matches that makes a lot of sense. And for me, I think a lot more rifles that we see, especially on the YouTubes, but just in general and even guns that we build out, really do benefit from having something like a budget LPVO. And uh, while there's certainly, if you have the disposable income, there's certainly nothing wrong going with something like a LPVO from someone like Night Force or you know some of your more expensive brands um, like Swarovski or any of those, you know, certainly is beneficial. You're not gonna do worse because you have a more expensive optic, but understand that your optic is only going to be as good as your rifle. And if your rifle's already for MOA, your optic isn't going to magically pull it in and make it a two or a one MOA. It really goes back to your um, barrel primarily and your action setup. How tight is the tolerances in your action? How tight is the how well is the barrel free floated and even your gas system? So once again, understanding your rifle will tell you whether or not to go for an expensive optic in my opinion. So anyways, hopefully this is kind of acted as a clarification video. Hopefully it isn't too dry and too boring, but I thought it would be worth kind of breaking down and explaining like the reality of, I see a lot of people on the gun tubes, you know, that just, they grab an AR-15 or they grab an AR-10 platform, they throw a night force on it and they claim that it's super, super accurate. Or moreover, when I see these same people, you know, grab something like a Monstrum, you know, a LPVO and they're like, oh, you know, it's just terrible. It's like, well, you didn't really get exactly great groups out of the night force either. So um, this is something where I've legitimately seen YouTubers pit, you know, cheap um, LPVOs up against $1,800 LPVOs. And once again, the rifle was really probably more suspect than anything because the rifle as a whole wasn't grouping that well. And once again, Minute of Man is not necessarily bad for a fighting rifle, but just know that's what you have and don't expect a expensive, you know, $1,200 to $1,800 LPVO to suddenly bring your um, fighting rifle to sub MOA um, specs. It's just not going to happen. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this wasn't too long winded. As always, God bless and I'm out. <coughs>